We're now going to turn our attention to the mindful stop technique, which is a mindfulness practice that is used specifically for stressful, challenging, or difficult situation. This isn't necessarily a de-stressor technique. This is more about achieving mental clarity so you can stay focused on behaving effectively or doing what matters most in the moment. And so it's a four-step process that I'm going to take you through. And the first I guess before you even engage in the steps, what you want to envision when you're in a stressful or challenging situation is to have an image pop up. And this comes through awareness and practice, but it's an image of a stop sign. And the stop sign is telling you to stop, which is the first step. Stop. What you want to do is bring your awareness to the present moment. And what we often say is stress or when you feel like you're getting upset is a cause for pause. Another way to just say is to stop. The next step is to take a deep breath. And this is really grounding your hub of your awareness to breathing. Take a deep breath. Notice the act of breathing. Connect on purpose to the present moment. And remind yourself to have a gentle and open attitude. Because the next thing you're going to do is step three is the O and stop. And that's observe with that open and gentle attitude. What you want to observe is what am I thinking? What's happening inside? What am I feeling? What am I doing? What is the other person saying, doing, or feeling? Or why is the person doing that in that way? What's happening in my environment? And so you're taking in information by simply observing and noticing with that gentle and open attitude with non-judgment. You're not here to judge things as bad or good or unfair or uh, unjust, rather to simply notice. Because the last step is P and that's to proceed positively. And when we've really actually thought about challenging or difficult situations, we often know the answers ourselves. It's like challenging difficult situations, most of the times it's not a mystery to us what we should do. It's often we lose sight of what we should do because we become too stressed. But hopefully up to this point, you've been able to kind of achieve that mental clarity so you can proceed positively in the moment. And that's doing what's most effective or important, not what you necessarily initially felt like doing or you want to do. Because when we get stressed or upset, what initially comes to our mind isn't necessarily the thing that produces the best outcome for ourselves or other people. So the mindful stop technique is something to practice over and over because the more you do it, the better you'll get at it and the better you'll actually get at handling stressful, challenging, or difficult situations. Mindful daily routines is the next set of mindfulness-based practices and really our daily routines offer us abundant opportunities to practice mindfulness in a natural way. Many people will say, well, I don't have time to do this. How do I fit it in? Well, your routines, you have to do routines like eat, you have to shower, you have to make your bed, you have to get your child ready for school, or you have to do some other preparation strategy as you uh, go off into the day. So these routines can be turned into mindfulness-based practices. And remember, the three elements are, you're gonna purposefully pay attention to what's happening in the present moment, inside and outside of you, you're going to have a gentle and open and kind attitude as those experience, experiences come in. And you're going to be intentional. And intentionality is having that confidence or personal agency to do what mat matters most as the experiences unfold moment by moment. And so here are just examples of daily routines that can be turned, in from, uh, turned from a mindlessness activity to a mindful activity. And those are getting out of and making the bed putting on and, or changing your clothes, brushing your teeth, bathing or showering, combing or shaving, interacting with others in the moment as you prepare to go off for the day. So these daily routines can, are natural ways to embed mindfulness-based practices to serve that de-stressing function. Mindful eating is the next way we can actually cultivate and practice mindfulness. And all it takes is to just kind of look in the relatively recent past and Imagine the last meal you had by yourself and imagine that you were actually working or doing something. How did that meal actually go? Do you actually remember it? Were you multitasking while you're shoving food down your face? We often 
don't even remember the process of eating. And one minute we put a fork down, we bring it up to our face, and the next minute we look down and our plate's empty. And we think to ourselves, how did that even happen? That's because our mind was stuck somewhere else and it wasn't engaged in the present moment in a way that actually separates or disconnects us from past or future thinking. And so mindful eating is about paying attention, full attention to the process and experience of eating and drinking. So we're going to pay attention to aspects of our eating and our food that we've never paid attention to before, like the colors, the smells, the textures, the flavors, the temperatures, what we like and dislike, what's good or bad. We're just going to notice those things and our reactions to that. Where do you feel hunger in the body? Where do you feel kind of satisfaction? What is half full? feel like? What does full, three quarters full feel like? People who have done this have been reported to have less stress on the back end. They've been shown to actually reduce their weight and act, enjoy the experience of eating more fully. So mindful eating is actually just taking those three core skills and apply it to the process of eating and drinking. Have you ever been driving to work in the morning and by the time you arrived, you felt like you already put in a full day of work because you spent most of the time in the commute thinking about all the stress that lies ahead. A lot of people spend their energy and their time while commuting either to work or from work to home, and they, they ramp themselves up or they, they rile themselves up, and they feel like they've actually put in the work when all was is the mind was focusing on stressful situations. So commuting, whether it's on a bike, walk, uh, train, or car, or in the context of Seattle here, on a ferry, it affords you the opportunity to pay attention on purpose to the present moment, what's happening on the inside, thoughts, feelings, and images, and sensations, what's happening on the outside, in your environment, the things you can see, smell, hear, touch, or what's happening in others. And we do that with a gentle and kind attitude and we make sure we have that sense of personal agency to do what we want to do and most important next. So we can use a lot of things as cues during mindful commuting such as stop signs, lights, brake lights from other people, uh, other commuters as ways to remind ourselves to tap into our five senses and pay attention to the present moment as it unfolds moment by moment. And when you do this, you'll actually notice things that you've never noticed before, even though you've taken that same commute thousands of times. So I would challenge you to try the mindful commute and pay attention to that commute process on purpose in a gentle, open way. And you, I'm certain you're going to find and notice things that you never recognized before, even though you've gone through that motions numerous times. So that's it for the mindfulness-based practices. And there are numerous other mindfulness-based practices that you can actually research and find to integrate into your life. But I just want you to, to remember that mindfulness, when we actually purposefully integrate it into our lives, serves those two basic functions. That's to achieve mental clarity and do what's most effective in each and every moment. And it also is that life de-stressor. So we can take the edge of stress off of our lives so we can achieve greater psychological and physical well-being. And those are the ingredients that lead us to becoming a resilient person.